today I'm going to talk to you about a match made in heaven. Okay, well, maybe not exactly heaven, but about 370 kilometers above Earth. This match is called SHARE. It's an acronym because I work for a space agency. It's the law. We have to speak in acronyms. So SHARE stands for Space Health and Aging Research. Now, when you first look at it, you might say, I don't really see the link there. And uh, when I arranged to meet with the director of the Institute of Aging, of the Canadian Institutes of Aging, he was like, uh, did she make a mistake? Why is space coming to visit me? Well, I made the case to him that I'm going to make to you today, and we've been working together ever since. So I hope I can persuade you that SHARE is something that is a value and something that we should work towards. So what started SHARE? This is a picture of John Glenn. He was the first American in space in 1962. He returned to space at the age of 77. And in this shot, he's actually doing a Canadian experiment called osteo. Now, he said that he was privileged to do osteo because as a senior citizen and astronaut, bone loss was something that was really relevant to him. So I'm just going to touch again on that link. Now, when we think of bone loss in the elderly, it tends to be a sort of general phenomena that their bones tend to weaken with age. But when you look at it in space and in a free fall environment, you, it's not all your bones because you still use your arms, but it's the bones you don't use, the legs. You don't have to, you're not fighting against gravity, so the spine, the hips, all these bones become a little more vulnerable. Uh, and so when we talk about bone loss, we're also talking, it's not like you lose a bone, but your bone structure is strong because it has this hard sort of sponge inside, and that gives it its strength. As that density gets lost and becomes more porous, that's where you get the weakness. So we're actually looking at weakening bones as a decrease in the density of the bone. Now here's some data that's comparing space results and Earth results. So you can see the decrease in bone density in the yellow bars on a populations at different age groups. And that's taken about the average you see over two years. Now look at that blue bar. That's what you see in hip density decreases in astronauts in just six months. So it's much greater than what you see in the even age-related populations. Now if we look at female populations, we still see in six months in space, female astronauts will lose more bone density then menopausal and postmenopausal women will lose in two years. So what we're seeing in space in some ways is like an accelerated parallel of aging. And a lot of this, these changes are related to microgravity. And it's not just bone. If you don't use it, you lose it. So you're also looking at muscles in the legs because you're not walking around. They tend to float everywhere. And uh, the immune system, we're seeing some interesting decreases in the immune system also. So there are a lot of different systems. And the vestibular system, which is gravity dependent, there are changes there. And then your brain, you have to adapt to all these changes. And the cardiovascular system, as we're standing right now, or as I'm standing, my heart is pumping against gravity to bring my blood to my brain. In space, it doesn't have to work that hard because it, you're not getting that pull down. And so you actually have the blood concentrating up. So your heart's not working as hard. It's a muscle. You get a bit of atrophy there. And another effect that we see is uh, dealing with the elasticity of your arteries. As we age, our arteries become stiffer. Okay? And you want elastic arteries because that heart beat pumps the blood throughout the body. And when they get stiffer, that whole process becomes less efficient. Now, here's some data, and the long curve looks at the increase in stiffness of the arteries in a Caucasian population over, say, 30 years, 30, 40 years. So you see it's a gradual stiffening of the arteries occurs. As we basically have a bit of a deconditioning of the cardiovascular system. But what's interesting is look at those points on your left. Each pair represents the before and after um, stiffness of arteries seen in astronauts after just six months on the International Space Station. And results are being shown for both female and male astronauts. So look how much the stiffness has increased in just six months. We're seeing an aging that looks like something you see over many years. 
in the general population. So a lot of these changes, while you're still in space, it's not too bad because you're not fighting gravity, so it's, 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 it's okay. But when these changes become relevant is when you return to a gravity environment. And depending when you return, it can be a bit of a bump coming back. That gravity can hit you pretty hard. And often, astronauts will need assistance in getting out of space vessels. They can't necessarily walk on their own. And Chris Hadfield famously said that when he first came back, he felt just like an old duffer. And, uh, but what's interesting is that, if you see him now, he looks pretty good. So while space, being in space, can represent accelerated aging uh, from a physiological standpoint, returning to Earth, we see accelerated rehabilitation. So my point is, is that if we study those two things, maybe they can inform each other. So what we see in space can help us better understand aspects of aging. And it's not just the physiological. There's a, an expression that is used in the psychosocial terms, and they refer to space as the ultimate ice. ICE stands for isolated, confined, extreme environment. So imagine you are six months in a small, small house, not with your friends, not with your family, but six, maybe seven of your work colleagues. Maybe not the ones you chose. <laughs> and you're going to be up there, you're going to be sharing tasks, sharing food, sharing space. And I see parallels here with what we see in senior residences, where you don't necessarily share rooms, share space, share anything with your friends and family. You can't bring your mementos with you. So all these things can result in various changes. And in both cases, we see problems in sleep disturbances. That's quite common in both populations. So I think the whole psychosocial, there are parallels. And uh, there's another parallel that I have to, I'll share a personal story on this one, but in space, we send really healthy people because they're far from hospitals, they're far from laboratory equipment, all that kind of thing, so we don't want them to get sick because you can't get to a hospital and all the you know, top-notch medical care easily. Well, my mom, when she was in Saskatoon, I was calling her once and she was saying, well, she hadn't gone for her weekly blood tests because it was too cold and too icy. She didn't leave the house. So I realized my mom's house in Saskatoon in winter was as much an ice as the space station for my mom. So there are some parallels in trying to get health care to the home to ensure that she's being looked after in the same way we're trying to make sure that we can provide health care to astronauts, even though they're far away. So I've tried to explain to you there are three kinds of problems basically, that I can see parallels. One, some of the physiological problems where we see a sort of an accelerated aging in space. The second is with some of the psychosocial issues. And the third, some of the technology issues surrounding healthcare delivery. So I think that we have common problems so we could work together to solve these. And that's what SHARE is about. And uh, we can find solutions. So what do those solutions look like? Exercise. Now, exercise, we are now learning, can actually support uh, maintaining cognition in an elderly population. It's very important in space to mitigate the bone loss and some of these other issues. And it also relieves boredom. Uh, sometimes, sometimes, exercise can be fun. So, uh, but what is the best way to exercise? What's the best regime? Should you do cardio? Should, you, should it be weight, you know, the weight resistance type? So these are all the kinds of things we can look at. And there's even what kind of technology? You see Bob Thursk using some European technology called ARID to do uh, strength training. Because it's not obvious to do it in a free fall environment. So that's one. And there has been already opportunities, or there have been occasions when space technology has made its way onto Earth. And one is uh, some radiation dosimeters that we tested in space are now used in over a thousand cancer clinics. And the one that I think uh, we can be really proud of is that the same precision robotics that allows the Canadarm2 to pluck a vessel out of space and attach it to the space station, in the hands of Garnet Sutherland at University of Calgary, that same technology is being used to make inoperable brain tumors operable. And then we have Chris Adfield, and he did a demonstration in space of a, of a bioanalyzer that was going to be used for blood, and that could be a portable thing to be used on Earth. 
So we're seeing some technology changes. And there's some other things that we've seen. Now this is a shot of a, some Canadian uh, white spruce seedlings on the International Space Station. So we were doing an experiment looking to see which genes get turned on in gravity and all that kind of thing. So it was a nice scientific experiment. But uh, on the day that they got harvested, so that's in the bottom, bottom corner, T.J. Creamer is getting ready to harvest them. Well, Oleg Kotov came in for a last selfie with those spruce. But this is not a great picture, but I love it. It's like one of my favorite. It's a still shot from a video. You can see this cosmonaut, he floats in to get a last smell of the perfume of the spruce. Because in that sterile environment of space, that spruce, that growing thing, was the only other living thing, and it added perfume, it was really important to them. I can tell you that when I go visit my mom in Saskatoon, I'm just there as a carrier for the dog. <laughs> and if I don't bring my dog, like, just don't come. You know? And so I've seen with my mom that uh, Munchkin can provide a diversion, she provides comfort. So these are all things that having another living thing around, it can make quite a difference when you're in these environments. And so they can make even a long time in a space environment bearable. And that, incidentally, is the first zinnia grown in space. So aging is, we're at the beginning of what's going to be a big increase in the aging population in the world, and also in Canada. They're gonna make a much bigger proportion of our population. And with that increase, we're gonna see an increase in the needs that must be met. So let's not wait for that to happen. Let's start working on that now. And space, and what we learn in space can be a very valuable tool to help that whole process along. And that's, that's what SHARE is about. So I hope I've persuaded you that by bringing together the space and the aging. And what we learn about aging can help us meet some of the challenges in space. And as we meet our challenges in space, maybe they can apply to an aging population. Look to the future. Humanity will explore space. And individually, we will age. With SHARE, we can work together to make both these journeys safer, healthier, and happier. So thank you. <laughs>